All right. Well, it is technically Thursday. I am recording this one ahead of time, but tomorrow is Friday, December 22nd. So this is a future focused weekly update where I'm talking about some of the latest topics and newsworthy stories that I'm catching in my highlight feed and just sharing some thoughts, reactions to that in hopes of influencing the way people think about things, maybe challenging some of the status quo thinking around that. And I'm getting ready because tomorrow is my last day and then I'm taking a couple weeks off, some very much needed rest, but I will likely be creating some additional content while I'm out. So you won't, I won't completely go dark. So the three topics that I was gonna touch on today, one of them will likely be very short, but the first one is the layoffs that I continue seeing happening right before the holidays. I do wanna address that one. Another one was Citigroup's big announcement on people working from home the rest of the year. And the third one was the use of AI for sniffing out AI use in job applications. So that is where we are today. The first one, the layoffs right before the holidays. Can I just say, I hate how much I am seeing this left and right, whether it's news articles like Etsy laying off 11% of its workforce, the cuts at Ernst & Young, some of the other big ones that I've seen coming into the holiday stretch, or even just the posts I see from folks who recently have been informed of a spouse or a friend or even themselves losing their job. And I absolutely I never like to hear about people being impacted in something as important as their job and the livelihood that is often tied to that. But I especially hate seeing it as we come into what should be an exciting, jolly, holly, happy season. That can just be a complete holiday killer for folks. And so if you are one of those folks out there, if you're one of the people that have been impacted or you know someone who has, well, no, if you are the one impacted, I am sorry that you're going through that right now. I think it sucks. I've been through it myself. It is not fun. It is not a positive experience, even though in some ways it may be a positive experience getting you out of there, but it's just not fun all around. And so I'm sorry. And even though this may be a big ask or a big uh, offer, if there's anything I can do to help, I don't know what, if it's an introduction, if it's, you know, need somebody to talk to, make a connection, I am here for you. So let me just put that out there. But the real reason that I wanted to talk about this wasn't just to express my dismay about it, but to continue trying to help people think differently about the way they think about layoffs. And so I'm going to hit this on a twofold way. One is just layoffs in general. I get from a short term standpoint, it seems like a fast, easy, effective way to reduce costs in an organization. You can reduce the compensation, you can reduce the benefit cost, you can reduce overall infrastructure to your, it sounds really, really tempting and it can sound like an easy fix. And let me say, well, I'm gonna hold on this. I, I get it can sound like a good short-term fix. There are so many hidden costs when it comes to layoffs that people do not take into consideration. And I know this because I have been part of discussions so many times where when I bring these things up, they are not part of the discussion, even around the financials of this. And so often it's because it doesn't necessarily line up nice on a financial model where you say, well, how do we really estimate our lost productivity cost? How do we really estimate the financial impact to our brand and what that means for our ability to hire top talent in the years moving forward? How do we estimate the overall you know, lost productivity that comes with the culture impact that we have and the loss of trust. And the fact, I can't tell you the number of times I've been part of organizations or advised in organizations where they make decisions only to realize, whoops, I guess we didn't take that into consideration. And so then the time spent bringing people back in to try and recover or burdening others with the work that needed to get done, but they cut the people who had to do it. And so I just want to encourage leaders who are in a position or leaders who are coming up in the ranks who will be at some point in that position to think long and hard before you jump to layoffs as a solution. The point I was going to make earlier is I acknowledge and I get that there are plenty of people out there who would say layoffs should never happen. I get that. And in a perfect world, sure, they shouldn't. I understand the reality is sometimes there is no other way. 
you just happen to be where you are and there's no way to back out of it. But the number of times I've seen either the timing could have been different, the approach could have been different, the handling of it could have been different. We can do a much better job when it comes to approaching layoffs. So just as a general rule, I would challenge anyone who's in a decision-making position when it comes to layoffs to be that voice in the wilderness, the minority report that instead of just going with the flow and going, okay, that's what we need to do. I guess that's the easiest path to, to put your foot out there and say, hang on a minute. Can we think differently? Are there some creative ways we could remodel this or you know, look at the long-term implications and actually do a full cost to the organization for going through this to really see, are we actually saving the money that we think we're going to be saving by doing this? Or are there some other alternative paths that we could take? Because usually I have found there are different approaches. So that's just my ask there. I think the other one is, is on the timing piece. I did a survey earlier this week just to, again, pulse folks and not just be thinking based on what I think, but actually hearing what others are feeling and thinking. And the question was, hey, if you had no choice, if a layoff was coming, would you rather have it be before the holidays or after the holidays? And almost eight out of 10 people said they would prefer it to be after the holidays. And I get, going back to the nuance, I get there are times where there's no way around it. You have to make this kind of accommodation, or there's a deadline, or there's something that you have to do. You've explored all options. But when you know that seven to eight out of 10 people go, please, if you have to do this, can you at least do it this way to not completely mess up the end of the year? I get you're, not, you're never going to make anybody happy. I looked at some of the responses. And of course, some people are like, I'd rather know ahead of time so I can plan financially going into the holidays. So I get you're, you're always going to offend somebody. You're always going to upset somebody. But boy, if you've already done the hard work to assess, hey, you know what? Layoffs are an inevitability. We've got to go this path. We've explored all the possibilities. T run it through a second round based on the timing and go, okay, if we have to do it, can we think really carefully about when we're going to do that based on what we know people really need and how, we're, how we can have the least negative impact on their lives. I think that would just be my kind of call to action as I look at the disappointing news feed this year of people wrestling with job loss at one of the most stressful, hardest times of year. All right. So with that, I want to jump to the Citigroup. I think this one's going to be relatively quick. If you didn't see this, Citigroup made a big hullabaloo uh, and lots of news articles about how Citigroup was allowing their people to work from home for the rest of the year. And if I'm being completely honest, I read the new article and thought to myself, four years post-pandemic, and we're still celebrating letting people who could easily work from home, the ability to work from home. I Maybe it's just me. And if you disagree, if you feel strongly the other way, let me know. I'm always interested in engaging in discourse in this one. But as I have seen what people are capable of and the way the technology has evolved, I really feel strongly that there is no excuse that we should not be empowering people to make the decisions they need about where they need to get their work done. And inevitably, the challenge I always run into is, well, what about XYZ worker? What about this role? I understand there are roles where you go, hey, this just, this is a requirement of the job. I can't have you assembling this part in your backyard. You have to come, oh, okay, I get that. And I understand there are certain times, but when I hear things like, well, not everybody can do it, so we're not going to allow the folks who can, I just go, "What? why are you doing that to people? Why are you robbing them of something that is such a simple thing that can drive so much engagement and making it seem like this is just a reward for the hard work? This should just be the way we do things. And honestly, I talk with my kids about this a fair amount, um, not this in particular, but lots of things. And I look at some things like the phone book, like commercials. We were watching a show the other day and an ad popped up and they were just like, what is this thing? I've never seen. I hope that by the time they get to the workforce, the idea that every job or any job actually required somebody to be in a specific locale at any point in time just feels like a really foreign concept to them. And again, I have no doubt 
there will be things that still require that and there still are today. But as I see some of the advancements with the Tesla bots, the robotics, the advancements in technologies, I continue seeing this a fight that anybody who's still holding to the, we need to control where people are getting their work done as a hill you do not want to die on. So I guess in some ways, good for you, Citigroup, for letting your office workers work from home through the end of the year. I will not be applauding your decision other than saying, well, it's about time. And to any other leaders out there, I would encourage you, um, unless you have really strong, compelling reasons that span beyond collaboration or other air quote words that can't really clearly be defined, question whether you really need to step in and control people's working environment. And even in the frontline work and work that's often requires more proximity, there's a lot more ways you can exercise flexibility than a lot of organizations or a lot of leaders are willing to uh, acknowledge. Now, I will tell you, I have faced many arguments on this on both sides. In fact, I've got a guest coming next year who is a CEO who has struggled with figuring out how to make this navigate uh, and how to do more around flexibility and has historically kind of stood in opposition to it. But as he listened to more of my content and uh, we've been engaging in different dialogues, he's starting to explore how that works. And so uh, definitely tune in later this year. We'll be, I'll continue to be talking about this, uh, even though for me, I still struggle to understand why it's a thing. But anyway, let's move on to the last and final one that... <laughs> I wrote a post about, if you don't follow me on LinkedIn, definitely check it out. But I wrote a post about this because I saw this and just went, are you kidding me? So this one is companies are moving towards implementing AI to help detect people who are using AI as part of the job application process so it can eliminate them from the candidate pool. So warning to anybody out there who... <laughs> Here, we're talking about job loss at the end of the year. Anybody out there who's considering using AI to help you accelerate your job uh, application process, be warned because this is a rising trend right now where companies are saying, hey, candidates are using this generative AI thing to help automate these ridiculous bureaucratic processes we have. And we're getting overloaded with applications. And one of the articles I read some even said, like, we don't even know if these are real people applying to the jobs. Now, let me be the first to say, I know AI and recruitment is a huge topic. I am not going to get into all the nuance and all the opportunities and pros and cons of AI and recruiting as a whole. I really want to focus just on this one because it hit me this week and really struck a chord, which was companies are being overloaded with applications. They're questioning whether or not these are real people on the other end. So naturally, why wouldn't we use AI to sniff this stuff out and eliminate it from the ranks? So again, like I said, job seekers be warned because this may affect your ability to get interviewed and hired if you're messing with this. But to the companies who are considering this, let me just say, this is quite possibly one of the best examples, not the best, but it is definitely a really good example of exactly what not to do with artificial intelligence. Let me just say, why would you want to eliminate people from your candidate pool that are already demonstrating one of the most critical job skills for 2024 and beyond, which is AI problem solving? People who are able to figure out, hey, here's this barricade. How could I use AI to work around it? Those are exactly the type of people that you should be targeting and going, hey, we should find those people. And we should work with them to go, hey, we've got all these other things. Are there ways we could use generative AI to help us with that? Those are great. You're actually writing off those folks by doing this. So first of all, just with that, even just challenge your own thinking of, hey, they're cheating. We should punish them. Wait a minute. They're not cheating. Chances are, if they're using AI to get through your job process, your application process sucks. And that's why they're trying to work around it because it's bureaucratic. It's asking them to duplicate all the things that they had to do. They're rewriting their resume in your ATS system. It's all this other stuff that why would you not encourage people to use AI for that? But again, the skill piece. So just challenge your even assumption. If you're someone coming into 2024 going, I'm really concerned about this and thinking about potentially using artificial intelligence to help us eliminate this from our candidate pool, please think twice about this. But then on top of it, 
like I said, I'm not going to get into all the AI bias stuff, but it's not going to accurately assess who is using artificial intelligence and who is not. It's just not, not only is it not going to be super accurate in detecting it, but furthermore, you got to think about the fact that generative AI is literally designed to mimic human behavior. So you're asking AI to detect something that is literally designed to mirror human behavior, thereby one, the AI is going to get better at mirroring it and the detection stuff is going to get better. You're going to ultimately end up eliminating people who are trying to do what you think is the best choice, which is, hey, do this the manual way. We just want real people filling out forms and worksheets. They're going to be the ones that the AI eventually goes, yeah, I don't think that's actually AI. It's And that's what you're going to end up with. So not a good approach at all as you think about this. And I just... Again, I look at these things and go, listen, if you are concerned, let me just say this too. If you really are worried about hiring a bot because you have so little oversight and so little engagement with candidates that it was actually physically possible for you to hire an AI bot that has no human on the other end, you might just want to burn your talent acquisition organization to the ground and start over. Because realistically, there are better ways. So rather than just rant on this, because like I said, I'm a little spicy this week and this one just triggered me more than usual. But rather than just focusing on why I think this is such a bad application of artificial intelligence, the number of reasons I think this is just poorly thought through, poorly designed, poorly executed, also the fact that the more people ask for this kind of stuff, the market drives where the innovation goes. If we are pushing technology companies to solve problems with AI like this, we're going to get more AI companies that are using AI to do this kind of stuff instead of the incredible, wonderful, beneficial things that it can do for society. So please, if you're in this camp, just reconsider. Now, if you're going, well, how do we deal with the fact that we're dealing with this overload of candidates or we're dealing with this. You know what? Artificial intelligence for assessing people and giving them opportunities to do things, I'm not opposed to that. So anybody who hears this and thinks, wow, Christopher is against using artificial intelligence for vetting candidates. No, I just think trying to detect whether they're using AI and then eliminating and penalizing them for using is a bad use of it. If you can go back, you can look at the way AI can be used to create simulations and allow people to actually apply job skills and then see how they perform on said job skill. You can use it to analyze something more realistic. I get you could do a deep fake of yourself, but again, something where you're asking somebody to think through and communicate a problem that they're solving and then vet, hey, how well did they actually try and solve that problem? Um, again, there are a lot of different, more effective and better ways in my opinion, that you could be using it. I'm not going to get into them all because I could probably do a full two-hour conversation on what you could do with AI to improve recruiting. But my main point with this this week, and it's a hot button for me, is please do not use AI to sniff out and penalize people who are just trying to get through the bureaucracy of applying for a job and using AI to help them with that. It is a mistake. It is a wrong use of AI. It will only backfire. You will end up hurting more people than catching criminals. And there are just better ways. So if you need help with that, hey, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to brainstorm if you haven't uh, already assessed my passion on that. So with that, those are the big three for me this week that are top of mind. Hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully it made you think. Maybe it made you a little angry, and I'm okay with that too. Share your thoughts, reactions, comments, whatever it is, share them back with me. And if there are other things top of mind for you, things that you're thinking about, and you're curious what my thoughts or my reactions to it would be, by all means, send them to me. I'm always curious to hear what's going on out there that I may not be thinking about. But until then, I will see you on the other side. Have a good one.